Hey there, this is Jacob with Survival Geek. Today I'm going to do a little presentation here with uh, uh, traps and fishing. Uh, right next to a pond um, in North Georgia, we have ponds everywhere, freshwater fish, smaller hooks, um, everything from catfish to dugal mouth bass, which are also known as carp, small mouth, large mouth, uh, bass, uh, brim, crappie, uh, and then in, in the uh, rivers and whatnot, we have uh, trout, lots of different types of trout, so um, as well as lots of other species like gar and whatnot. Um, so obviously I, I'm a fisherman, I do a lot of fishing, and so I, I have a small kit I bring with me everywhere I go, um, such as this. But what would happen if you didn't have a fishing pole on you, and you still wanted to go fishing, but I've been in times where I've been in like Helen, Georgia, which is modeled after a small little German town. Uh, and you have a river running right through it, and you don't have a fishing pole with you. What can you do? Um, most of the gas stations will still sell uh, fishing hooks, uh, things like uh, snail hooks. Um, basically, just like a fishing line that's already tied on with a snail. Uh, and at the end, there's a loop, kind of like the uh, loop of a bowline. Uh, bow line. And, and you could tie a bank line or some type of line through here and uh, still fish with it if necessary or make a cane pole. But um, still, that's still kind of slow. What if you want to increase your chances of fishing and uh, fish with 20 different poles instead of one? Uh, or in a survival situation, you want to pull in lots of fish rather than just one. So there are things such as trout lines, but I'm going to go into detail a little bit and show you how to do one that's uh, a bit easier than that. Um, these are things you can make up the night before or the week before or whatnot, um, but it's the ability to move the camera a little bit closer here. It's the ability to be able to <coughs> to fish and uh, trap at the same time. This is a fishing trap. So I'll get a little bit closer here so you can see what I'm doing. Back up a little bit here. So I have a bear spot on the ground here. So uh, you can use a rock if you need to, if you don't have a rock. Uh, obviously I'm going to use a, an S-wing axe here. These are really nice, regardless. So. S queen axe, I can hit with the back, I can uh, cut everything with the front, it's got a small bit to it to where uh, this is more meant for trimming limbs and small things rather than splitting wood. Splitting wood, the axe here is actually thicker, so it's more of a wedge type, but uh, um, this one I like a lot and it's got a hook here for pulling stakes and different things out of the ground as well. So uh, anyways, so what we'll do... I already have one pre-set up here, but I'll show you how I've made it. Different parts of our trap. To begin with, we can use a sapling or something to start with if the tree is already in the ground. But if you don't have a tree nearby to use, um, we can make our own. And that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make my own trap if I don't have any trees around. So I start with a piece of wood, and the piece of wood is about... Uh, three feet long or so. Um, I, this one's at three foot seven. So <clears throat> I sharpened one of the ends. I trimmed off all the branches and I'm going to hammer this thing into the ground till it's pretty stiff. And this one itself is pretty stiff. You see there's some bend to it but it is pretty strong regardless. Um, so the top here I've actually sawed off flat so it, it's straight with the stick. There is a little bit of bend in the stick, that doesn't matter. I've mushroomed the head down as well. That way uh, when I start hammering on it, it doesn't break or split as much. I've also used a lighter to uh, burn the edge a little bit, to, to kind of uh, fire harden it a bit, and as well as the other end for about a minute with the tip of the flame as I'm turning it um, to make it a bit harder and uh, to 
extract some of the uh, juices inside it being a live piece of wood. So, I'll hammer this in the ground. And still starting to split, but that's fine. <clears throat> and it is in here pretty well, so it's gonna have some flex to it, and flex is what I want. I just don't want it to fall over. So it being there, next thing we have is we have a, uh, a sapling. I took the liberty of cutting one out of my yard. Sapling is a baby tree. Um, typically anywhere from seven feet, eight feet to about 12 feet. Uh, it can be 14, 16 foot if necessary, but you want to have it to where when it's upright, it has a bend to it. The top is flexible and it's not gonna snap when you decide to bend it down. That's important. So we're gonna stick it right next to our piece here. And I've got some pre-cut bank line that I'm going to use. You can use paracord, bank line, some type of cordage. You can make your own cordage if necessary. Every camper, bushman, survivalist, whichever, should know things like uh, lashings. Lashings are very, very important. Certain knots are important. Lashings are important. So, growing up in the Scouts as a kid, um, lashings were always something I had fun at. You could build so many different things. Uh, Google it, uh, Google Images, type in pioneering. Um, or or uh, pioneering and lashings, or uh, uh, pioneering diagrams. It will show you all kinds of neat stuff. I've seen Ferris wheels where they see four different people at once, or you could turn and crank the side all built out of lashings, it's, do, or, or towers or bridges or whatnot. This one's called a shear lashing. Shear lashing is used to make, um, for instance, if you were doing a flagpole uh, up off the ground vertically, you use shear lashing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two of them here, and it'll, it'll mount this pole to this pole, so they'll actually be together. They won't go anywhere. So, you can start off with a clove hitch or two half hitches. Whichever you prefer. In this case, since I have some room, I'm just going to do a close hitch. And if you're unaware on how to do knots, um, there are so many different videos online or websites, uh, so many different phone apps out there on, on uh, knots. So uh, I would start there first. Close hitch. And then you wrap the line side by side. And you're supposed to do about anywhere from eight to 15 uh, laps around. I don't think I'm gonna have that much rope. And you wanna do it as tight as possible. And you'll finish with either a clove hitch or two half hitches. And two half hitches actually make a clove hitch. Make your make your wraps as close together as possible. So keep bunching them together, pushing them down. The type of trap we're doing is really common. It's called an L7 snare or a twitch up snare. So one part of the snare will go in the ground and the other part is like a, a woggle or just an extra piece of wood. And your fishing line that actually attaches to the woggle. Bit 
The thing with tarred bank line is it's got tar in it, so when you go to cinch down a knot, the knot actually stays a lot better than paracord. Paracord you can easily untie, but uh, tarred bank line is a lot harder to untie. Since I got the gap. Close enough. Second piece of line, we'll do the exact same thing up top. So about right here. Now, if you were to use some other knot than a clove hitch, like a taut line hitch or whatever, uh, I mean, if it works for you and it's getting the job done, you know, it doesn't ha actually have to be exactly. Other other knots will work, but it's just it's just a standard with washings. No frappings on a shear lash. So there's square, shear, diagonal, and tripod lashings. Okay. As I move the log, all of a sudden. Like I said, as tight as possible, side by side. In later videos, I'll show uh, different other types of lashings to do. There are quite a few good Boy Scout sites out there that are uh, you'll come across for pioneering if you start searching pioneering that have detailed videos on how to do this type of stuff. So, um, if I were you, I'd check out the uh, Boy Scout videos. To tell you the truth, there. Learn a whole lot from those. I brush up on them every so often. There we go. This 
So, now that's together. I could do one more in the center if I wanted to, but for what the purpose of this one is, it'll be fine. Then I have a secondary piece. Secondary piece looks like so. Uh, I made a um, 45 degree angle here when I cut with a saw just to give it a sharp point, kind of carved a little bit, get, did a little bit of heat treatment. Um, this was a fork. So if you have a, uh, a tree limb that goes out and it splits off in two different directions, you have a fork. And uh, just cut, 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 and then from there you can make your piece. This will go in the ground. I uh, mushroomed the top here, fire hardened it so I could hammer it in a bit better. And then this is cut as well. And what will happen is, make sure my camera angle here is good. What will happen is, this guy will go in the ground. A little tangly up. This will go in the ground. My top piece will come down to about here. Yeah, about right here. You want, when this comes down, you want this to be kind of straight up and down with your with this piece right here let's try for right here Camera closer. Zoom in a little bit. Trying to get a better camera angle here. Okay, my other toggle piece here, and I, I already pre-wrapped mine with uh, bank line. It's not a 36, it's a lot smaller than a 36. Um, this is what I typically use, and I'll do uh, two wrappings on bank line. I take a saw, I cut into here to where the teeth are barely etching into it, <clears throat> and then where they're barely etching in in two different pieces, so I can just barely stick my thumbnail into it, maybe a sixteenth of an inch all the way around, and I tie two pieces on. One's about 10 feet long, one's about 20 feet long. The 10 foot piece would uh, tie on to my stick up here towards the top, and then the uh, 20 foot piece would tie on to uh, um, some bait or something like that that I'm going to throw out in the water with like a bobber or whatnot. Um, and then what happens is when the fish actually bites it, it'll pull this off from here. So this gets stuck onto here. The fish will pull this off and the, the, uh, this up here at the top will actually set the hook. So, my favorite knot of all time is called a top line hitch. I'm hoping you guys can see this. A, bit, a little bit weird tying it from here. I'll have to show you guys a little bit later. Mine's a little bit long. One, two, on the inside, and one on the outside.
bunched together. Mix of knots that actually will cinch down or cinch back up and if I were to cinch it back up and then give t pressure to it, it's not going to actually slide off or come undone. Uh, great for uh, tents and tarps is a taut line hitch. It's my favorite. I use it all the time. So I can tighten it down. I really should have, uh, well, I can do that as well. Give me one sec. strong arm. So I'll pull down my trap piece. I know this video is getting a little bit long. I apologize for that. two half inches. Now, my cargo piece is there. It will set about right here. Hooray! <laughs> there. Now I'm using orange paracord so you guys can see it, so you guys can see uh, the whole thing. Um, but you want to use like a, a fishing line, or uh, I, I use typically uh, either the bank line or I use braided fishing line, like 30 pound test or something. Let me back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing. And here we go. And again here, we have shear lashings. I put two of them in place. I have a secondary knot tied up here at the top. There we go. And then finally down here towards the bottom, get tangled up here. Zoom in for you guys. And there we go. So what's that prove? Well, here's what happens. Our fish bites our line. Boom. It sets it. It will actually set it and set the hook in its mouth, hopefully, just like you were to set it with your fishing pole by pulling back on your pole and setting the hook in its mouth. And then uh, you come back and let's say you had 10 of these or 20 of these running down a bank in different places. You come back at different points throughout the day and either the bait's gone or you have a fish on the line. And collect your fish, rebait them, throw them back out again, and you're just harvesting fish. Pretty much 20 poles becomes 40, 40 becomes 60. I mean, do the math. But uh, you can fish one or two poles or you can fish several. Get in uh, a lot more fish. Typically with these, you'll buy uh, either snell hooks or you can use regular hooks. Snell is a little bit quicker. Uh, 
Also, swivels are a little bit quicker. So let's move back over here a second. So, ooh, this thing almost fell. I'm sorry, I'm on a hill right now. I mean, yeah, that's better. Ooh, sorry for the rear cam camera angles. So this is my kit. Um, as you can see, there is a swivel here. Um, and then I have a hook with a swivel, and then I get uh, worms. These just look like uh, mini wigglers. Um, I carry this in a satchel bag. So I have beads, and these are actually glow in the dark. You crack them, and they, uh, they glow, so at nighttime you can see things bobbing or whatnot. Little bitty bobbers, different types of worm baits, or larger worms. And then my main bag, well not bag, but uh, my main kit, you, you carry around lots of different swivels. Bigger swivels, smaller swivels, weights. Always carry a good amount of weight with you. Whether there's a current in the water or whatever you come across. I have really small hooks, um, different bullet weights. These actually screw directly into the bait itself and then uh, the loop goes through the hook and uh, it just dangles so your uh, fish has a, a lot less chance of actually pulling the bait off. Um, these are commonly sold in China. I have the uh, these little eye hole pieces. Um, these are for doors but they screw right into a small sapling or whatnot give you an eye hole so that way you can tie on a fishing line. Real common. Get that later. And uh, that's about it. A lot more hooks. And you're going to carry whatever you're going to carry with you to use for different types of stuff. You want to have options. You don't want to limit yourself. I even carry salmon eggs and little uh, uh, little minnow bites. Uh, not minnow bites, uh, more meant for brim. But uh, weighted bobbers. The weight makes it sit there and it'll go like this inside the water one side clips to one side of the line the other side clips to the other side of the line there we go and it'll actually be in the water just like this so you can see it bob up and down the weight makes it go vertical but uh and then of course stringer always carry a stringer for, or you don't have to but um it makes it easier for carrying off your fish but uh that's about it. I appreciate you guys joining me, and I will catch you guys in the next video.